Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today we'll be talking about the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine that's stirring phase three trials and likely will receive emergency use authorization in the United States in March, 2021. I'll be answering the most common questions that I've received about the vaccine and how it compares to the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines that are already in use. Let's first talk about the three differences between Johnson & Johnson vaccine when compared to the messenger RNA vaccines that are already being used from Pfizer and Moderna. Number one, the first big difference is that this vaccine only requires one shot. While the Pfizer and Moderna messenger RNA vaccines both require two shots. Number two, the second difference is that instead of using a lipid particle to deliver the vaccine into the cells, scientists use a virus called adenovirus 26. It's a relatively rare virus that causes mild colds, but it's very effective at invading human cells. Scientists modify it so it can no longer replicate and cause illness. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is in a group of vaccines called, quote, non-replicating viral vector vaccines. The COVID-19 vaccine being developed by AstraZeneca and Oxford also uses this technique. When the adenovirus enters the arm of a person, it finds a cell to infect. Once inside the cell, instead of telling the cell to make more adenovirus like it usually would, it tells the cell to make messenger RNA that will produce SARS-CoV spike proteins. And from this point on, the mechanism of action of this vaccine is similar to the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. These spike proteins then produce an immune response that will allow a person to respond quickly to any further exposure to SARS-CoV-2. A third difference is that the Johnson & Johnson vaccine does not require deep freezing to keep it viable. The DNA is not as fragile as the RNA, so the Johnson & Johnson vaccine can be refrigerated for up to three months at 36 to 46 degrees Fahrenheit, compared to the Pfizer vaccine that requires negative 94 degrees Fahrenheit to store. Okay, let's move on to another obvious question. How well does the Johnson & Johnson vaccine work? The data that we have so far is from Johnson & Johnson itself and has not been peer reviewed, but the data shows that they had 43,783 participants in their trial. The vaccine was 66% effective in preventing moderate to severe disease 28 days after vaccination, and it was found to be protective 14 days after vaccination. Let's define moderate and severe COVID-19 infections. Moderate COVID-19 disease was defined as one or more of the following, evidence of pneumonia, deep vein thrombosis, shortness of breath, or abnormal blood oxygen saturation below 93%, an abnormal respiratory rate of greater than 20, or two or more systemic symptoms suggestive of COVID-19. Severe COVID-19 disease was defined as signs consistent with severe systemic illness, admission to an intensive care unit, respiratory failure, shock, organ failure, or death. And while they state overall it was 66% effective in preventing moderate to severe disease, this effectiveness varied by geographical location. The level of protection was 72% in the United States, 66% in Latin America, and 57% in South Africa, 28 days after vaccination. Well, why was there such a difference? Well, it's thought that some of these newer COVID-19 variants are more prevalent in other countries, especially in South Africa, where the South African variant is thought to be causing 95% of the infections there currently. But an even more promising data point on this vaccine was how it protected against severe COVID-19. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine was 85% effective in preventing severe disease across all regions studied. And what's even more exciting is that the efficacy against severe disease increased over time with no severe cases in people that were vaccinated after day 49. This is great news. But let's compare this to a stunning 95% efficacy for the Pfizer vaccine and 94% for the Moderna vaccine in preventing any COVID-19 symptoms, including mild, moderate, and severe. I think that's still amazing. 
But the caveat here is that the phase three trials for those vaccines were not conducted during a time when multiple variants were emerging. I'm hopeful that this would still be true, but we really can't know for sure. And the Johnson & Johnson vaccine was put up against multiple emerging variants. Okay, next question. How safe is the Johnson & Johnson vaccine? This vaccine seems to be well tolerated, at least in the preliminary data that we have. Overall fever rates were 9% and overall serious adverse events were higher in participants who received placebo, which means they didn't receive a real shot and no anaphylactic reactions occurred in any patients. How does this compare to the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines? Well, because these vaccines have been given to lots of people, we're gathering good data about the side effects. For example, from the United Kingdom, of 40,000 people who received the Pfizer vaccine, it's been shown that one in seven that received the first shot had some kind of side effect within seven days that included most commonly headache, fatigue, and chills. And after the second shot, that increased to one in five. And let's remember that Moderna's phase three data showed side effects of 54.9% versus 42.2% for placebo after the first dose and 79.4% versus 36.5% for placebo after the second dose. Fever, headache, fatigue, muscle pain, and chills were far more common after the second dose compared with the first dose. So I think it's safe to say that there's fewer side effects with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, but this may be because it's not as effective as the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines or because it simply hasn't been given to as many people yet. Okay, next question. Does the Johnson & Johnson vaccine use aborted fetal cell lines in the production of their vaccine? Well, yes. And this may raise some ethical concerns for some people. I wanna stress that even though the vaccine production uses a fetal cell line, this does not mean that the production of the vaccine uses cells from recent abortions. This particular cell line was produced from per C6 and is a fetal cell line created from eye cells from an 18-week-old fetus aborted in 1985. Since the altered adenovirus cannot replicate on its own, the fetal-derived cell lines provide their replication machinery to generate large amounts of the adenovirus. So for those that think any vaccine connection to fetal cell lines is problematic, this vaccine may not be the choice for you. I would encourage you to try and get the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine instead although they did use fetal cell lines to check for safety. And furthermore, I want to clarify that none of the COVID-19 vaccines have used fetal tissue in the development or production of their vaccine. They use fetal cell lines that have been grown in labs from fetal cells obtained decades ago. So in summary, what are the pros and cons between the different vaccines? Well, the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines can prevent any disease symptoms caused by SARS-CoV-2 at a rate of 95 and 94 percent respectively, while the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is able to prevent severe disease in 85 percent. And that's true even against some of the newer emerging variants. Furthermore, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine only requires one shot, and it's easier to store while the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines require two shots within 21 or 28 days between them. All of the vaccines seem to be well tolerated, but the side effects seem to be even less with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And lastly, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine uses fetal cell lines in its ongoing production, while the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines use them during their development only. But at the end of the day, if someone asked me which COVID-19 vaccine they should take, I would tell them the one that's available to you. They all have different pros and cons to them, but it's just important that you get any one of the COVID-19 vaccines. They will all provide protection against the most severe cases of COVID-19 and will help to slow this pandemic. Thanks again for joining me.